What happens when you've got damping? What happens when you've got damping? Well, basically, here's our equation of motion, or differential equation of motion. Now I've got a CX dot, dot term. Okay. Um, our complementary function now has this exponent decaying exponential in here. And obviously this is now omega d. That we've seen before. That's from last week. Okay, so we don't need to worry too much about the complementary function. For the particular integral, I'm assuming a, um, in this case, I'm assuming a uh, constant rectangular forcing function. So xpi is gamma. x dot pi and x double dot pi is zero. So obviously that's quite um, nice. We can plug that into our equation. We get m times by zero plus c times by zero, and we get k times by gamma. It's quite clear that before, as before, k times by, um, uh, sorry, um, xpi, gamma, is f0 upon k, as we had before. And so our general solution is our complementary function plus our xpi. Okay, that's quite nice and straightforward. And so we apply our initial conditions. Okay, so when, when you've got displacement being zero, cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero. And then we have, so we have a1 plus f0 upon k equals 0. So it's quite clear that a1 is minus f0 upon k, as before. But this time, a2 we need the velocity, okay? So we have to take the derivative of this equation. And as, as we saw in the tutorial two weeks ago, the derivative is a little bit complicated, okay? Because you've got this, obviously, the, a function of two... Um, functions of time, okay, so you have to use the product rule and the train rule, okay, so that's what I've done here, we end up with quite a complicated equation, but basically we have x dot pi as an exponential, as before, and then we've got cosine omega t times by this bit, and sine omega t, t times by that bit, okay. If you go through the math, that's what you end up with. As a useful exercise, you will be doing lots of differentiation in this uh, module, um, you could have a go at doing this checking I've got the right answer. And so setting t equal to 0, obviously this term turns into 1, this term drops to 0, so that term disappears. We end up with 0 equaling um, 1, because obviously e to the 0 is 0. 0 equals cosine this times by, uh, sorry, 1 times by this. Okay, so 0, if this equals 0, we end up with this term equaling 0. a2 minus a1, so we can work out, we know what a1 is, that was minus f0 upon k, so that can go there, and we can work out what a2 is, and we end up getting zeta omega0 divided by omega d times by f0 upon k. So if you remember back before, when we had the damped case, a2 came out to be zero. In the undamped case, a2 is not zero. So if you insert those into your general solution, you end up with this. And then simplified out, you can see quite clearly there's an f0 upon k in each of these terms, so that can jump out. And we end up with 1 minus zeta, sorry, the exponential times by cosine, and then uh, exponential times by sine, okay, so that's in there, obviously, and then we have the 1 minus, which is the, that last term over there. So it's quite clear to see that what we've got is we've got a, 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 you know, this bit here is a constant forcing function, okay, minus a decaying sinusoid, which makes sense, doesn't it? If you apply a constant force, the thing's going to start oscillating, and then it's going to settle down to that constant force, okay? There's the static deflection, okay? And this obviously is a sinusoid, okay, that decays. And so if we plot that, you end up with this sort of response. Here's the undamped case. So you apply the constant force, and it oscillates up and down between 0 and 2 f0 upon k um, forever. Obviously, in the damp case, you apply some damping. It won't overshoot as much as this. And obviously, the oscillation will settle down until you hit static deflection. So as time approaches infinity, you end up with f0 upon k as your response, which makes sense. 
think about damp systems and stuff, okay, you apply a constant force, you get this sort of response, okay? Think about a, you know, uh, I guess, a, a car that you've lifted off the ground so the wheels are not um, on the ground. You then put the car on the ground, okay, and the, the car will oscillate and then damp out. Because you know, and hopefully if your dampers are working, you won't get much overshoot and it will damp out very quickly. Okay, if your dampers aren't working very well, obviously you end up with a bit more of a oscillation. But it's a real system, and so you will actually damp out in the end. So that's the constant force being applied. Right, lastly, beating. What happens when omega, so we're going back to the undamped case now. So there's our solution. What happens when omega approaches omega naught? You have this term, sine omega d, omega t, and sine omega naught t, they're almost going to be the same, okay? They're both sinusoids, but slightly different frequencies. Slightly different frequencies. And what happens is you've got, energy. you have phase drift occurring, okay? Sometimes these, these frequencies are so close that those two terms will add together or subtract from one another. They, you know, if, obviously, if this is opposite to this, then that essentially becomes a plus. They add together to reinforce, okay? But sometimes, obviously, they, they will be in sync with each other. You have a minus sign, they'll cancel each other out. And because these two are close together, that term is essentially 1. Yeah? So you have, sometimes it will be sine omega t minus sine omega naught t. So those omegas are, are, are close together. At some point, they're gonna, that's going to be 0. Obviously, as you increase, uh, sorry, as, as, as time continues, they'll end up being out of sync. Okay, so you end up with basically sine omega t plus sine omega t, they will reinforce, and you get this thing called beating, okay? Um, which I'm going to demonstrate if I can, if it works. Let's uh, come out of here. Right, there we go. I'm going to play 256 hertz. Okay, can you all hear that? Volume up, volume up, volume up, volume up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the same web page. Okay, and I'm going to let's just check this is working. Okay, it is. I'm going to go to 257 hertz. There we go. So we've got 257 and 256 hertz, and you can hear a beating, okay? Yeah? I could make it faster by going slightly further away. Yeah? Even faster. Yeah? And that's basically, I've got a sine wave and another sine wave that are quite close together, and at some points they're reinforcing, and at some points they're cancelling each other out, which is why you get the this uh, work, um, you know, whoop, 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 whoop sound. Okay, and obviously I could also go below and get the same sort of thing. And obviously I could keep going further away. That's, that's almost, uh, that's too far away, that's two tones now. But I could, you know, two tones. Let's go for 70, let's see what happens. You can hear the slight variation there, cancelling each other out. Yeah, and so on. So you get this beating thing that... <coughs> so as the frequency approaches each other, okay, you get what's known as beating. To work out what the period is of that, of that woo, woo, woo sound, okay, you take the difference between the two frequencies, okay. Obviously I was working in Hertz, so it's 2 pi times that difference. <clears throat> 2 pi times by the frequency of beating, and obviously to get the period you take 1 over that difference in Hertz, and you end up getting the beat period. So obviously when I was at 256 Hertz and 257 Hertz, okay, then obviously this difference was 1, I get, uh, um, sorry, yeah, this was 1, so obviously my beat period was 1 second, it was going whoa, whoa, whoa every second. And obviously as my difference increased, when I went to 256 and 258, obviously the frequency of beating was then 2, and so I get 1 half of a second being the period, so it was doing whoa, whoa every 2 seconds, okay, uh, every second.
And obviously, as you increase more and more and more, then this number gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you can't distinguish between the difference anymore and you end up with basically two tones being played at the same time. So that's beating. And that's what it looks like if we were to plot it. So that's taking the equation that we had before, this one up here. Okay. And then if we plot that with respect to time, I end up with this being my um, case. Okay. So we end up from zero. Um, obviously, it increases to a certain maximum where they add each other together. You get two times it. And then obviously, they will cancel each other out where you get the zero. And obviously, they increase and so on. And there's our beat period. Okay, the beat period being not the frequency of the oscillation, but the frequency of the of the beating that's going on. <laughs>